The Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the 14th chapter. Now when Jesus heard about the beheading of John the Baptist, he withdrew from there in a boat to a deserted place by himself. But when the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the towns. When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them and cured their sick. When it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, This is a deserted place, and the hour is now late. Send the crowds away so that they may go into the villages and buy food for themselves. Jesus said to them, They need not go away. You give them something to eat. They replied, We have nothing here but five loaves and two fish. He said, Bring them here to me. Then he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven, and he blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples, and the disciples gave them to the crowds. And all ate and were filled, and they took up what was left over of the broken pieces, twelve baskets full. And those who ate were about five thousand men, besides women and children. The Gospel of the Lord. Please pray with me. O oh Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of each heart be acceptable in your sight. Lord, you who are our strength and our redeemer. Amen. We've spent the, the last several weeks walking through some chapters in Matthew. Specifically, we've spent a number of weeks on Matthew 13. Jesus has taught us all about the parable of the sower and the weeds and the wheat and the mustard seed. He's even taught us why he teaches in parables. And after all these stories that he has shared, he goes to his hometown to, dis to uh, teach them as well, and, and they dismiss him. You're just the carpenter's son. We know who you are. Why are you doing this? So he leaves that place, and he finds out that John the Baptist, his friend, and his cousin has died. <clears throat> and it's then that he goes to rest, he takes himself away and he withdraws to have a break, but the people follow him around and so he continues to teach and to cure, and this is where he then feeds the 5,000. <clears> so he's withdrawn to mourn John's death, but the people follow him and he heals and cures them. And then as it becomes late in the day, the disciples get worried about the people being hungry and that they couldn't feed them, so they tell Jesus, send them away. And it's at this point that I just have to ask the question, why? Why are they so anxious to send these people away? Were they themselves hungry? Sometimes when we're hungry, we kind of make decisions with our stomach, don't we? Or were they tired? They'd been following with Jesus all along on this journey as well, so perhaps they were tired and they wanted to rest as well. Or maybe they were actually thinking of Jesus and they knew how busy Jesus had been. And so they wanted Jesus to have an opportunity to rest and to eat. Maybe they were worried that the crowd would get angry or hangry in this case. And then I wonder, do these questions even matter? Does it matter why the disciples wanted to send everyone away? It seems maybe not so much because Matthew doesn't go into those details at all in the story. In response to the disciples' request, Jesus uses this as another teaching moment. He takes the five loaves and the two fish, he blesses them, and he breaks the loaves, and he begins to share it among the people. I have to take an aside here to say, don't those words sound familiar when God blesses and blesses the bread and breaks it and shares it with the people. It's, it's this precursor to the Last Supper. It's almost as if the Last Supper is designed to help us remember that God provides what we need. And so Jesus shares this with everyone, and lo and behold, shortly everyone is fed. There's 5,000 men, not to mention that at least in women and children so probably at least 10,000 if not more so and they were fed so much that there are 12 baskets of leftovers not only was there enough but there was an abundance 
Again, I have to wonder, is the moment for the disciples to learn or is it for everyone there? Is this a moment when Jesus performs a real live miracle where five loaves and two fish somehow multiply themselves and feed everyone? Or is the miracle that people can actually share and be fed and live in great abundance when they first fear scarcity? This miracle, at least in this gospel, never says anything about the reaction of the crowd. In some ways, it seems to be more about the actions of the disciples. They're still struggling with having faith in God, even after all the things that they've been through with Jesus. So perhaps Jesus forms a miracle so that they can once again see that God always provides. In this scenario, the story can be compared to an Old Testament story about Moses with the manna and the quail and the Israelites. They're hungry, and they're complaining that they don't have enough, and so God provides for them, but tells them there's no need to gather up. Don't gather up for the next day because there will be enough the next day. And when they do, it goes bad. In the story of the feeding of the 5,000, Jesus once again shows that there's more than enough when you depend on God for your needs. And as a crowd of Jewish followers, these people would understand the significance of Jesus' power here. And they would also understand the power that this story parallels and what those stories meant. Perhaps this was a stark reminder to all that it's easy to criticize people of the past about their faith. But just like the disciples do here, we also sometimes in the moment fall prey to our own insecurities and instabilities and we worry about whether we have enough. But maybe this story is about a different scenario. The people have come and now Jesus and his healing group didn't want the people to go away. And perhaps he also knows that if prompted, they might also have a little to share. And so as he brings out this little that the disciples have, so do the rest of the people. The scene that that pops into my head is like way in the back where all the women and children are. All the moms are digging through their mom bags, right, to bring all the snacks out that they had come prepared with. We often worry that we don't have enough, but in fact, we don't need very much. Perhaps this story is about finding abundance <clears throat> excuse me, in a little less than we think we need. Jesus blesses what they have in front of the people, and the disciples begin sharing near the front. And the women are men with a little food, and their possession recognize that they too can share. And maybe because it's not much longer, and they'd only need just a little bit before going home, there is enough for all with leftovers. <clears throat> In our Isaiah reading today, the prophet asks, Why do you spend your money on that which is not bread, and your labor for that which does not satisfy? I wonder, for Americans in a culture where, according to surveys in the early 2000s, we were 6% of the world's population, yet using 43% of the world's resources, that we live with excessive abundance, And I have to wonder if this particular miracle story is not only speaking to those present in that time and in the time of the Exodus, but to us now today. And so I leave this story, this miracle story today, with a lot of questions. What do we spend our money and our labor on? And are they things that satisfy, or are we hungering for more than we should? Are our eyes bigger than our stomachs? Do we live thankful for our abundance or in fear of not enough? And as as far as the story goes, does it matter whether we know the particulars of who was fed or who brought forth the food? Is this a story about the power of God to create food right when needed or the power of faith in God to move people to feed each other? to recognize that what we have is usually more than enough and that it is also our responsibility to 
to make certain that others have enough. The good news from this gospel today, I think, is clearly spelled out in the last two verses from our hymn, our opening hymn this morning. Father, providing food for your children by wisdom's guiding, teach us to share one with another, so that rejoicing with us all others may know your care. Then will your blessing reach every people, freely confessing your gracious hand. Where you are reigning, no one will hunger. Your love sustaining showers the land. Amen.